Welcome to another tech help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. Today, we're going to answer that age old question for Access developers. What's the difference between docommand.runsql and currentdb.execute? Inquiring minds want to know. And by inquiring minds, I mean Mike from Newcastle, England, one of my platinum members and a few other people. I get asked this all the time. Mike says, I've been following your Microsoft Access videos for years, and you used to always use run SQL in your code, but recently I've noticed you're using execute instead. What's the difference between the two and what should I use? Well, Mike, like everyone else, I keep learning more about Access myself. In fact, I consider it a bad day if I don't learn something new, right? I try to learn something new every day. I read a lot of other access websites and blogs like No Longer Set and a few others. I'll put some links down below to some of my favorites. And as time goes on and I continuously learn new things, I change my technique from time to time. When I first started programming in Access VBA and using SQL, I used the run SQL command a lot, which is easy and it's good enough for most developers. However, the more experience you get, the more you realize that execute is where the real power lies. So let's talk about the differences. Oh, and of course, I'll start off by saying if you're currently using Run SQL and you're happy with it and it works for your database, stick with it. It's fine. There's nothing wrong with it. There are just some extra capabilities that Execute can offer that can really take your database to the next level. So Run SQL, it operates within the Access user interface. It's interpreted by Access before the database engine gets it, right? There's a database engine that sits kind of below the Access front end, the interface that you work with and execute sends commands directly to the database engine. Well, why is this important? Well, run SQL, since it's working within the access interface, knows about the different objects in the interface, like forms and their fields. So if you format a run SQL statement like this and put forms customer F customer ID inside the SQL statement, it can handle it. If you try that with execute, you're gonna get this too few parameters error message. Now you can still reformat the code. You could still just say where customer ID equals and then use some string concatenation here, right? And this will essentially uh, figure out what that customer ID is at the VBA level before sending it to the execute command. So you just have to structure things a little bit differently. Now, the reason why run SQL is better for beginner developers is because it will give you warning messages, right? It'll give you the, you're about to update one row, click yes if you wanna do it, click no if not, blah, 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 right? Now, you can turn these messages off either at the system level under the file options, right, access options, or you could turn them off with the set warnings command. Execute is completely silent. It doesn't give you any pop-ups or dialog boxes or anything. It's just, here you go. I'm just going to run your SQL for you. Well, I'm not going to run the SQL. I'm going to execute the SQL. <laughs> and, of course, if you want to learn how to turn off those warnings for the run SQL, I have a video for you. Here you go. You'll find a link down in the links section below. Continuing on, run SQL can prompt the user for parameters. For example, you could say set family size equals and then put a parameter inside of your SQL and then it'll prompt you for it. I personally would never use this. I would get that value from a form field myself. I don't like those prompt parameter value pop-ups. So go watch this video to learn how to do that. Run SQL will give you a progress meter down below on the status bar at the very bottom of the access window. If you're running a query that takes a while, right, three, four, five minutes, you're processing 100,000 records, you'll see the little progress meter go across the bottom. Execute does not give you that. It is completely silent. But this will be the topic of a future video. There is a way to get some kind of visual feedback, and I'll talk about that later. Run SQL is relatively slow, and I mean relatively slow, meaning that, you know, for small queries with a few dozen hundred records, we're talking milliseconds. But if you got a big query, like I mentioned before, where it takes run SQL two, three, four minutes, execute might crunch that down to a quarter of that time. So if you got 100,000 records to crunch through, you could be talking about the difference between 10 seconds and two minutes. So you'll have to try it and see, but execute is definitely faster. Because again, execute works directly with the database engine. It doesn't go through the access interpreter. Run SQL can be used in a macro. Execute, nope. But I almost never use macros, so I'm not worried about that. 
I will add that yes, you can use a wrapper function and use run code in a macro and then use that to run your execute command. But why go through all that? Just don't use a macro. <laughs> Run SQL can be canceled by the user if when they get that prompt up front that says, hey, you're about to run an action query. If they say no, it will cancel the run SQL command, but it will generate an error. You'll see it right there, operation canceled by user. So you'll have to trap that error with some error handling on your own. And of course, error handling covered in this video. Now, execute commands cannot be canceled by the user, but they can be rolled back using what's called a transaction. Again, this will be covered in a future video. But you can do some stuff, execute the SQL, check some conditions, and if you don't like what happened, you can roll it back if the whole thing is encapsulated inside of a transaction. Again, future video, check down below to see if I've released it yet. Now, the problem with run SQL that I don't like is that it cannot programmatically handle errors. In other words, if an error happens, uh, during the run SQL, you won't see it if you've turned off those nuisance warnings, right? If you set warnings false, if you turn the warnings off, then you won't see anything. You won't see the, the nuisance warnings. You won't see errors. You won't see anything that happens. With execute, you can trap errors. There's a parameter called DB fail on error. Okay, so if the execute is running and there are errors, you can then use error handling to see what happened. And I will be talking about this more in the extended cut for the members. Basically, with run SQL, once you turn off those warning messages, you're completely blind from that point on. Run SQL cannot programmatically tell you how many records were affected. Yeah, you could, if you're doing like an append query, you could do a decount and then do a decount after it runs. You could figure it out. But with execute, there's actually a records affected property, and it will tell you exactly how many records were whatever, deleted, appended, etc. And again, I'll be showing you how to do this in the extended cut. So in summary, in a nutshell, and all those other whatever analogies, run SQL runs at the access interpreter level, whereas execute goes directly to the database engine. Run SQL can see forms, execute cannot. Run SQL will give you warning messages, execute does not. Run SQL has the option to give you parameters, but why execute cannot? Run SQL has a progress meter. It can be used in macros. It can be canceled. Execute cannot. Run SQL is slow. Execute is faster. And execute can be rolled back in transactions, whereas run SQL cannot. Now, run SQL and execute help you to run the SQL, but if you want to learn more about SQL itself, check out my SQL seminars. Part one is all about select statements, part two is all about action queries, and part three is all about modifying the structure of your tables with SQL. Check them out. There's the link. And if you want to learn more about programming and VBA with Microsoft Access, check out my developer lessons. I also earlier promised you a list of some of my favorite Access sites, the ones that I read on a regular basis. Here they are. Here they are in no particular order, although I do like No Longer Set the Best. He's got some great articles. I'll put links to these down below as well. And No Longer Set, Mike's got an article right here where he teaches you to avoid run SQL completely, which, yeah, okay, I, I you know, I kind of concur. But for beginners, it's okay. But once you get seriously programming, you want to kind of skip it. Okay, now, in the extended cut for the members, we're going to take a look at that trapping errors with DB fail on error and counting the number of records affected. This is in the extended cut for the members. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut videos. So that's it. That's going to do it for your tech help video for today. I hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have below. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. Click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Want to learn more? Click the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. YouTube does a pretty good job of hiding it. It's right down there. See this part of the description here, right? The name, the video's up here. There's a little show more down there, right down the bottom. It's kind of hard to find. But once you click on that, you'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. And YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted like they used to do. 
But if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. And you can pick how frequently to get emails from me, either as they happen daily, weekly, or monthly. Now, if you'd like to become a paid member of my channel and receive all kinds of awesome perks, click on the join button. You'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks, including my extended cut videos, access to my code vault, lots of VBA source code in there, template downloads, and lots more. I'll talk more about these perks at the end of the video. Even if you don't want to commit to becoming a paid member and you'd like to help support my work, please feel free to click on the tip jar link. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got some puppies to feed. But don't worry, no matter what, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you really want to learn access and you haven't tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, and more. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link down below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? The whole thing, free, four hours. Go watch it. And okay, okay, a lot of you have told me that you don't have time to sit through a four-hour course. So I do now have a quicker Microsoft Access for Beginners video that covers all the basics faster in about 30 minutes. And no, I didn't just put the video on fast forward. <laughs> but I'll put a link to this down below as well. Now, if you like level one, Level two is just a dollar. That's it, one dollar. And that's another whole like 90 minute course. Level two is also free for paid members of any level, including supporters. So if you're a member, go watch level two. It's free. Okay, want to get your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and send me your question there. Members get priority, of course. While I do try to read and respond to all of the comments posted below in the comments section, I only have time to go through them briefly a couple of times a month, and sometimes I get thousands of them. So send me your question here on the Tech Help page, and you'll have a better chance of getting it answered. And while you're on my website, be sure to stop by my Access Forum. We've got lots of lively conversations about Microsoft Access and other topics. I have a fantastic group of moderators who help me answer questions. Shout out to Alex, Kevin, Scott, Adam, John, Dan, Juan, and everybody else who helps out on the site. I appreciate everything you do. I couldn't do it without you. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course on YouTube. Yeah, I'm on Facebook too, but I don't like Facebook. Don't get me started. Now, let's talk more about those member perks. If you do decide to join as a paid member, there are different levels. Silver, Gold, Platinum, and Diamond. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class every month, and some other perks. Gold members get all the previous perks, plus access to download the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use, the code that I build in most of the videos. You'll also get higher priority if you do submit any tech help questions. Now, answers are never guaranteed, but you do go higher in the list for me to read them. And if I like your question, you got a good chance of it being answered. You'll also get one free expert level class each month after you've finished the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks plus even higher priority for tech help questions. You get access to all of my full beginner level courses for every subject, and I cover Lots of different subjects like Word, Excel, VBA, ASP, lots of different stuff, not just Access. These are the full length courses found on my website. You get all the beginner ones. In addition, once you finish the expert classes, you get one free developer class per month. So lots of training. And finally, you can also become a Diamond sponsor. You'll have your name or your company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown on each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. 
Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you again soon.